my name is Susan Marzellini and this is Christine Ford and this is the second part of the resistance training lecture series. In the first part we talked about the theory of and the basics of resistance training and this will be the practical part. So we're going to demonstrate all of the exercises of the resistance training program. Just a few things that you should know before you start. You should talk to your cardiac rehab supervisor before you start the program and you always need a warm up and cool down before your exercises, so stretching and a, and a five minute cardiovascular warm up, walking or stationary cycling. Always breathe normally when you're performing the exercises. So you'll be lifting the weight up against gravity for two seconds, it should take you about two seconds, and lower the weight down and that should take you about three seconds. And just breathe normally, never hold your breath. And always take a little rest break between each exercise. You should take a minute of 30 seconds before you start the next exercise. Now your exercise leader or your rehab supervisor when they're prescribing you the weights for these exercises will determine a weight they think you can lift 10 times comfortably and the last repetition should feel as if you could do two more repetitions but not five or ten more repetitions. So you shouldn't be straining and struggling to lift that last repetition. So Christine and I are going to show you the first exercise. The first exercise is called the dumbbell row. If you look in your package, you'll see the diagram and a written explanation and you can follow along. So Christine puts one hand on a chair seat to stabilize her and one foot in front of the other. So the um, leg on the side of the, the arm where she's holding the weight should be uh, further back and the other leg should be forward. So she'll lift the weight up, always holding the weight below the shoulder and as she lifts the weight up, she'll squeeze the shoulder blades together. So in this exercise, you're working the muscles in the upper back and the upper part of the arm, behind the arm. Number two seconds up, three seconds down. Always breathe normally. And as you notice, um, Christine's upper back is parallel to the floor. Okay, and don't, one of the common errors is to lift the shoulder blade up. Christine, if you can just show, show them an error when you lift the shoulder blade up. Okay, that way you're not isolating the muscles that you should. Okay, so the next exercise is called the half squat. And for this exercise, you always stand in front of a chair, uh, just in case you do lose your balance, and your feet should be a little bit more than shoulder width apart, and your toes slightly pointed out. And Christine will lower herself down, she sticks her rear end back, and she leans a little bit forward for balance, and the arms come out as she lifts herself up down I should say as she lowers herself down and that will main, help maintain some balance and with this exercise you're working a lot of the muscles in the front of the legs those are the quadricep muscles and the muscles in the rear end these are really important muscles for when you're walking and walking or jogging an important thing to remember with this exercise is the knee should not shoot past the toes when you're doing it. So Christine will show you how not to do the exercise. So see how her knees are well in front of her toes. That's putting too much strain on the knees. So always keep the knees behind the toes and never go below a 90 degree angle in the knees. So just about to where Christine is going down. If you go down any further again, it puts too much stress on the knees. The next exercise is the dumbbell row. So Christine will get two weights. <clears throat> and this exercise is working the muscles in the front of the arms. So she'll grab her second weight and she'll stand with her knees slightly bent, feet shoulder width apart, and she's gonna lift one weight up. And as she lowers it down, the other weight comes up. An important thing to remember for this exercise is that the elbows are right at the side of the body and they don't shoot out and come forward, so they're pretty stable. Also don't try to use the upper body um, to lift the weight, so you're not leaning back to lift the weights. If you tend to do that, you can always um, stand against a wall when you're doing it. <clears throat> okay. So that's the bicep curl, <clears throat> and the next exercise is the um, hamstring curl. 
So Christine will use a Dyna band. We have um, elastic bands of different thicknesses. The yellow one is the easiest one. It's the thinnest one. She's going to loop one end around the foot and the other end around her ankle. So Christine, if you can face forward for a second. So you can see how Christine's standing on one end and the other end is looped around the ankle. So with the end that, with the leg that's looped, with it looped around the ankle, she's going to lift that heel up as high as she can and then lower it down. And you can use a chair for um, support. Okay, just put a couple of fingers on the chair and that gives you a bit of support. So in this exercise, she's using the muscles just in the top and the back of the leg. These are the hamstring muscles and that's an important muscle group to work both for walking and it also helps um, support the back. So she's lifting up for two seconds and lowering down for th three seconds. Remember to keep the knees together. A common error is that the knees separate. So Christine, if you show them how the knees can se separate, okay? And in that way, you're not um, getting the benefit. You're not isolating the hamstring muscle. Good. Okay, the next exercise is a standing lateral raise. And with this exercise, you'll need two dumbbells. <clears throat> So Christine is going to hold the dumbbells to the side and with uh, feet shoulder width apart and knees slightly bent, she's going to lift the weights up. An important part of this exercise is to bend the elbow slightly. That takes the strain off of the elbow joint. So again, two seconds up, three seconds down. You don't need to lift the weights any higher than shoulder level. If you do have shoulder problems, we have an alternative exercise in your package that you can do that won't put any strain on the shoulders. Good. Always keep your head up when you do these exercises and that helps keep a straight back. So the next exercise is called the heel raise. So you can do this again in front of a chair. Maybe we can start out without weights and then show them with weights. And um, so Christine with one hand on the chair, both hands for a bit of support, she's going to raise the heels as high as she can and then slowly lower them. And this is a really important exercise to help with balance. As people get older, um, they're increased risk, they have an increased risk of falls. And they found that by strengthening the muscles that support the ankle, such as this exercise, it can help reduce the risk of falls. Now for people who are uh, moving on and, and going forward with this exercise, you can hold weights in the hands and do exactly the same motion, but you're not hanging on to the chair. So it's really good to help improve the balance and to strengthen the um, calf muscles. The next exercise is a supine lateral raise. So Christine's going to lie on the mat. And when you're doing any exercise when you're lying down um, on your back, you should always have your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. And that takes some of the stress off of the lower back. So Christine starts with the weights above the chest. She slowly lowers them down, always at shoulder level. But she'll keep her elbows slightly bent. And that's really important to take the stress off of the elbows. So this exercise is working the muscles of the chest. So she lowers them down so she's almost touching the ground and then raises them back up. And remember, always breathe normally and count to two coming up and lower them down to a count of three. You're really building the muscle mass when you're lowering the weights down. So that's why we have you do that a little bit slower. The next exercise is called the curl up. And this exercise is to strengthen the abdominal muscles. It's really important to help prevent back injuries. So again, Christine has the knees bent, feet flat on the floor. She puts both hands underneath the small of her back. And actually, one leg is straight and one leg is, is bent, and that helps to keep the pelvis stable. And by putting her hands underneath the lower back, she's helping make, to maintain that natural um, 
curve of the lower spine. So Christine's going to raise up the head, neck, and shoulders slowly, and then she lowers herself down. And you really only need to come up about a quarter of the way to the knees. You don't have to come up that much, and you'll get the, that way you'll get the most benefit for those abdominal muscles. And some people like to curl their chin in, and you can imagine just uh, holding a tennis ball underneath the chin as you come up. If you find your neck gives you some problems, and when you're doing this exercise, you can take one hand, put it behind the head, and just give your head a little bit of support, and that might help reduce the, the discomfort there. But let us know if you do have any problems with this exercise. So now we're moving on to exercise seven, which is a supine fly. So Christine's going to lie down on her back. And when you do any exercise, when you're lying on your back, you always need to bend your knees with your feet flat on the floor. And that will take the stress off of the lower back. With this exercise, the weights start above the chest. Christine will bend her elbows slightly to take the stress off the elbows. She lowers the weights down, always keeping the weights at shoulder level, and then she raises them back up. So it should take two seconds to lift them up and three seconds to lower them down. And in this exercise, you'll be working your chest muscles. Always remember to breathe normally with this exercise as well. The next exercise is the curl up. And this exercise will be working the muscles of the abdominal area. Really important, then that helps to prevent lower back injuries. So with this exercise, one knee is bent, one leg is straight, and that will help stabilize the pelvis. And Christine will put both hands underneath the small of her back, and that helps to maintain that natural curve of the lower back. She'll raise the head, neck, and shoulders slightly off the floor. You only need to go about a quarter of the way up to the knees, and then she'll lower herself down. Remember always to breathe normally when you do this exercise. It's natural to hold your breath, but that increases your blood pressure. Now, um, in terms of the head, neck, and shoulders, if you feel any discomfort in the neck, then you can use one hand to give a bit of support for the head and just do the same motion. And, but if you have any further problems with this exercise, let your exercise supervisor know. So the next exercise is the tricep extension. Christine will have both knees bent, feet flat on the floor, and you can do this one arm at a time if you like. And the weight's above the shoulder, and she, Christine will bend her elbow, lower the weight down, always keeping that upper arm perpendicular to the floor. And in this exercise, she's working the muscles on the back of the arm, the tricep muscles. You can use that other end, uh, arm to, to um, support the, the uh, arm that's lifting the weight, and that's actually a very good idea to do that. Once you're comfortable with that, you can even try lifting the weights at the same time. Okay, and always remember to relax your head on the mat. You shouldn't be straining the neck muscles at all. Good, the last exercise is called the um, the uh, bird dog, actually, and it's one of the best exercises to strengthen the muscles of the lower back. So you'll stand on uh, you'll stand on all four. So both hands on the ground, both knees on the ground. You lift one arm and the alternate leg, always keeping everything parallel to the ground. And as you can see by doing this, you're strengthening these muscles in the lower back. Uh, research has shown it's one of the best exercises for the lower back. Now if you have problems starting at this level, then you can actually lie down flat on the mat with your forehead on the mat and raise one hand and the alternate leg. You only need to raise that leg about a quarter to, you know, two inches or so. So not too high so that it hurts your back, but just a little bit so you're, you're strengthening the muscles of the lower back. So you do ten of these all together, five on each side. And that's the last exercise, so we hope you enjoy your resistance training routine. Please let your rehab supervisor know if you have any symptoms or any problems while you're doing these exercises. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Christine Ford, and this is Susan Marzellini. Today, we're going to be demonstrating the Alternative Resistance Training Program. So this is, for the pro this is the program for those of you who may have trouble getting down to the floor. You should have already seen the RT introductory video. This phase is for the demonstration of the exercises. So before you do your exercises, or the resistance training exercises, please ensure that you check with your exercise supervisor. OK, Susan, let's get to it. Oh, I should also say we should remember to do a proper cardiovascular warm up and stretches before and after you do the resistance training exercises. So the first exercise is the seated forward curl. This exercise is working your abdominal muscles, and this will help you uh, if you have any back problems. All right, so Susan is sitting close to the edge of the chair, feet about shoulder width apart, feet should be touching the floor at all times. She is slowly lowering herself so that her, the middle of her back touches the back of the chair and she's moving back up to the neutral position. If you look at Susan, she's keeping her head, neck, shoulders all in line. She's not allowing her back to curve as she touches the back of the chair. Susan, would you be able to show them the improper way to do this where the back is curving? Yeah, so she's not slumping into the back of the chair. She's keeping her back nice and straight as she's doing so. If you need to, you can hold onto the chair lightly as you do this exercise, but please don't rely on the chair. Use your abdominal muscles as you lean back and forward. The next exercise we're going to do is the wall push-up. She's so going to make her way over to the wall. She's going to put her hands about shoulder width apart on the wall, feet about shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent. She's going to slowly lower herself towards the wall and back out. Remember the cadence will be about two seconds down and about three seconds back to the starting position. This will ensure that you get the most out of the exercise. Also ensure that you're breathing normally as you're doing these exercises. Okay, Susan's back, staying nice and straight. Again, she's not slumping her back. She's keeping her head in the same position. Next exercise is the leg curl. Susan's going to put one band around one foot, and she's going to anchor to the floor. With the other leg, she's going to slide all the band all the way through the, to her ankle. Now she's going to use the chair for support, and she's going to raise one foot up, or curl one leg up to 90 degrees, no more than 90 degrees, and back down again. If you notice, her knees are staying together. She'll be able to form a straight line. And imagine if you put a grapefruit between the knees. That's about the distance apart that you would need. Again, remember the cadence, up to three, back down to three, nice and slow. So then if you could just show the audience the improper way to do the exercise, where one knee is not, the knees are not aligned. Again, it's important. We're working the hamstring muscles, the big muscles at the back of the leg. In order to isolate them, you do need to keep those knees together. All right. The next exercise is the bow and arrow. This exercise is working the shoulder muscles. Susan's going to hold the band in one hand, and the one hand is going to be extended. That's the anchor. The other hand is going to be holding the band, palm facing inwards. She's going to slide the hand back to about her armpit. That's the arm that's going to be working. The other hand, or the anchor hand, should stay straight the entire time. Again, feet about shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent as she's doing this, breathing normally. Your exercise supervisor will, will be able to tell you whether which band color is appropriate for you or which weight is appropriate for you. Susan has now switched hands, and now she's working the other hand. The next exercise is the heel raise. Well, this is working the calf muscles in the lower part of the back of your leg. This exercise, we ask that you go up onto your toes and back down again, using the chair if you need support initially. As you get more comfortable with the exercise, you can put weights in your hands, either side. Just make sure you're holding the weights lightly in your hands and not shrugging your shoulders as you do so. Okay, and again, remember the cadence. 
bicep curls. Oh. We're just going to grab the weight. Thank you. Shoulders again. We're going to stand shoulder, feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent. She's going to curl the arm upwards towards the shoulder, keeping the elbow close to the body the entire time. She's isolating those bicep muscles in the front of the arm in order, order to keep the elbow at your side. She's keeping the wrist locked as she's doing the exercise. And as she lowers one weight, she's bringing the other weight up. Nice and slowly. Great. The next exercise is the back extension, the seated back extension. So Susan will take a seat in the chair, feet shoulder width apart. She's going to sit right in the back of the chair, and she's going to lean forward. She'll have her hands in her lap or in front of her, leaning forward as far as she's able to go comfortably. And then she's going to sit back up to a neutral position. Again, she's breathing normally as she does this. She's now progressing to hands at the temples. Again, this progression will be added with the, uh, by your supervisor. And this exercise is working the muscles in the lower back. If you do have any lower back troubles, do mention this to your supervisor before you start resistance training. That is the end of our program. Make sure you do a proper cool down and enjoy resistance training.